Hey folks, Ray at DCAgramRecord.com here. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different than usual. Uh, one, I'm not reviewing something in this video, and, and two, it's not going to be me talking for the most part, except this little intro section. Instead, I'm going to talk about these two things behind me and some of the issues that have been happening to some of you. Um, now, since these were announced back at Eurobike 2018, so back in July, uh, they didn't start shipping, well, that one. The kicker started shipping in July, um, but the kicker core didn't start shipping till September. Uh, and then since then, they've shipped a crap ton of units, and we'll probably get into that in just a few minutes. Uh, still, there's been folks that have been having issues with both of them on a variety of different things. And it's always tough for me to figure out whether or not the issues are widespread or just vocal, if you will. Um, so like think of forums and stuff like that. You go into a forum that's like a manufacturer forum or a cycling forum, and someone says they have a problem. For the most part, only people that have problems tend to tend to help that. Like if you went into the Garmin forums, uh, you're only going to see, for the most part, people having troubleshooting type issues. But that's also true if you went to Apple's forums for their phone or anything else, you would come away from like an Apple forum seeing or assuming that every iPhone was broken. And that's not necessarily true. Instead, there's just so many iPhones out there that 1% or 2% or whatever number of percentage it is means that the problem seems way worse than it is. And so it's always tricky trying to figure out with these sort of things whether or not it's a widespread problem or just something that's like a handful of people that are more vocal and whatnot. Uh, but one of the things that kind of got me more and more into the last, I would say three to four weeks, is seeing folks that had broken units and Wahoo support, like everyone across the board has said that Wahoo support is amazing. There's no like, there's no discussion about that for the most part. The, the question is, why is it that people have gotten new units and new whatevers and then had them break again? And that's to me is more interesting when something keeps happening to the same person time and time again. Last week at CES 2019, I guess it was, in Las Vegas, uh, I got a chance to chat with Chip Hawkins, the CEO of Wahoo Fitness, about sort of this whole thing. Uh, and our hope was we had to do a video before uh, we both left that show to kind of talk through, let him talk through, that's not really me to talk through, let him talk through what's going on, what they've done, what they're doing, how they're fixing, and all that kind of stuff uh, from a technical standpoint. And if you know, if you've been around this channel, my blog, anything for a long time, I'm all about the technical side of stuff. Like, I don't really care about marketing stuff. It's not my cup of tea. Um, but when something goes wrong in a company and eventually something goes wrong for almost every company, or I would say they're probably not trying hard enough, uh, it's two things that I focus on. One is do they do a good job of recovering from that? Like how do they handle that incident? Um, do they help customers? They got people on going? Do they own up to all that stuff that was in this bucket? And the second bucket is what technically broke? Like I want to understand what broke to understand and make a judgment on whether or not uh, that company knows what they're doing. Um, and so that's what I want to hear today is from them from a technical standpoint as to what they've done. And hopefully we'll also talk about this first bucket about what they're doing to get people up and, up and running. In any case, uh, because I am like, four or 5,000 miles away from Atlanta right now. We're gonna do this via Skype call. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and connect up to Chip and he's gonna walk through what they're doing on their side. We're recording this both on separate cameras here so you don't have to watch Skype quality for the entire thing. Uh, so once we get past the intros, we'll go ahead and do that. And then I'll kind of close with some final thoughts after that. Oh, and one last thing, uh, keep in mind that this isn't the first time Chip's not how to do this, but essentially how to do this. Uh, back, I think like four or five years ago at Eurobike, uh, we did a similar thing after the very first gen kickers had problems with accuracy and in that case it turned out to be shipping that was actually causing uh, the optical sensor inside to get misaligned and that would cause power accuracy issues uh, so it's cool to see them him doing this again when something comes up I think that's good for companies to do that um, hopefully he can explain what's going on to everyone and you can make a decision whether or not you trust what they're saying or don't trust or trust in their products more importantly uh, and you know make your purchasing decisions from there anyways let me get them all connected up and uh, we'll dive into it Okay, so folks, here we go. We've got uh, the Skype call all connected and they've got their cameras on their side of recording. So that way it makes it a little bit clearer so you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, and so this is Chip Hawkins, CEO of Wahoo Fitness. And I'm just gonna kind of hand over to Chip now to go ahead and just sort of run through what the problem is or is or was on both these two units right here. Uh, and he's gonna go into some of the technical details on that and talk about resolution and off you go. Thanks, Ray. Um, I know we've had a lot of issues, a lot of talk on uh, forums and, and your review about things that have been good and bad about the Kicker 18. Um, I wanted to go just into a couple of details on the primary things that we ran into and, and what we did about it, what we're doing about it, that sort of thing. Um, so first, what we did, uh, we, we had several changes from Kicker 17 to Kicker 18, primarily around you know us trying to make it more reliable and make it quieter. 
Um, and so the one of the one of the both of these things that changed were kind of design issues that we've we've that we've gotten solved. But um, the biggest thing that hit us was right after shipping, we had a challenge where we had um, some noises coming out of the kicker, um, and it's basically. It was because there's a key on a small pulley on the kicker, and that keyway wasn't designed to, um, we didn't anticipate that it, that it wouldn't always be under load, so it allows it to, to move back and forth a tiny bit. Unfortunately, through echoing and everything else, that turns into a big nasty noise. Um, we picked up on it pretty quick after we started shipping. It wasn't something that was on every unit, it was on just a small percentage of units, and it was on units after they were written for a few hours. Um, so. You know, it was, as soon as we realized it, we started looking at how we fix it. We took a couple of steps. Um, first, we changed out the keyway to make it fit as tight as we could, which which solved it for you know ninety nine point nine percent of the time. Um, so we had kind of two steps in production. We immediately caught it, but we had a whole bunch of units already made, um, and so the percentage of those units was you know. I don't know what the number was. It was low, but it was enough that it was definitely happening. Um, I, you know, I think Ray, yours, uh, did it yesterday. And just like that, I broke my ticker. <laughs> it's uh, uh, early units definitely were um, a higher percentage, but still low percentage. Um, so, so we did two steps. The first step was we replaced that key at the factory, started shipping those units, and then we looked at it and said, well. It's hard to make that key perfect all the time. Um, actually, the, the easiest fix is really just a little bit of Loctite because it's it's design, the key is doing what it's supposed to do. It's transmitting the torque. What it wasn't doing is keeping that little bit of, of movement out. So um, so as of Drew, you keep me honest. Drew's here with me. The 39th week of last year, every single kicker has had the new screw and um, and and the new key and a little bit drip a lot tight. And so none of those can ever make this noise. Um, most of the very early units aren't having any problems. Some of them are, and then the middle ones, it's been very few, but some. Um, from our perspective, we haven't made a big announcement about it because we fixed it as soon as we could, and anybody that has a problem, we, we just take care of them, and we always will. Um, but, but just because people seem to want to know, that's what it was. It's a keyway. Um, I've got. I've got. Um, there is a key fix. If you want to speak to that, there is a key yeah, fix. Yeah, so we've got a couple of different options that we've offered people. If people want to fix it themselves, it's pretty quick. It's a screw and a washer and a key and a little bit of a Loctite and, um, and we've got some instructions. And I think we give a little gift certificate for people who want to do it themselves. Or if that's not an option for people, they want to uh, trade their kicker out. We do that as well. Um, but it's been. Uh, yeah, it, it was a, it was a hassle, and it, and it takes a long time for the early kickers to get through the pipeline. Pipeline, um, yeah. but but it's it's definitely not an issue anymore. If, if that you know that that issue, that's kind of everything I know about it. Every I mean, you know, kind of what we know. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that has hit us, and um, and it's a much lower occurrence, but it's real. Is we have a um, we've had kickers that lose the ability to detect speed. Um, Original, the real problem is it's losing the ability to tell how fast it's going. That looks like no speed, no power. Um, and and if, if we go back to the very first kicker, that's been the hardest problem we've had to solve is just reliability, to reach 100% reliability on that speed sensor in the environment that kickers in, are in with temperature and vibration and everything else. Um, so this year, we made a couple of changes. We moved the speed sensor from up on the outside of the flywheel in the plastic down deep into the inside near the flywheel and it's been awesome like the occurrence of problems this year of, of not picking up speed or you know it, before it would be affected by light lighting so issues if the sun shines in the afternoon on your kicker that could break it so we've we've solved all those things um, ultimately what we've what we found and it's kind of ironic is that we have a, a it's possible to do an electrostatic discharge and, and that's just like when you get your finger shocks you, you know, the kicker is susceptible to that damaging it. And it doesn't happen very often. It's a very low frequency. When it happens, it screws up this power sent. The speed sensor basically gets fried and we need to replace that board in the kicker. Um, and you mentioned when it happens two or three times. Unfortunately, if you're in a if your house has that condition where everything you touch is, you know, if you're in a really dry area or whatever, 
if it happens to you, the likelihood it's going to happen to you again is way higher because that's how it happened in the first place. Um, so we're addressing it in the same way we do everything. If it happens to you, we're going to give you, we're going to fix it. We're going to make it right. Um, we're also addressing it to try to make it so it can't happen. It's way less than what we had in any previous model. Like, and, and, and the crazy thing is, as I went back and looked at this, we've always had this problem. We just had so many other problems <laughs> in the mix that we didn't narrow it down. No, now we know exactly what's wrong. We're able to attack it. We're putting an ESD discharge diode on the board so it can't happen anymore. And it's, um, right, it seems like a bigger issue, but it's quantity rather than an actual new issue. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, um, it seems like it's noisy, and I don't want to give our competitors numbers on volumes or sales or any of that stuff, but it's not a lot. I mean, we're talking, you know, a couple, a few a week, and we sell a whole lot more than that. Okay. So in that case, like one of the things that I know support's been telling folks that you know, people are kind of receiving feedback back is to to not use, like if they're getting a new kicker, um, a kicker or a core, because it affects both, correct? Um, the, the ESD issue, um, to definitely not use their old power supply um, is kind of the, the wording that supports telling them. No, that's, um, so, so there's a few things that we're doing. One is to use a grounded power supply, so that helps. Um, and so some of the power supplies over the years have been grounded, some haven't. So, so the first thing we're doing is we're using a grounded power supply in all cases. It's not that the power supplies, I read yesterday from somebody that our power supplies are burning up kickers. Um, it doesn't matter. It's that ESD problem. It's it's really rare. Um, if uh, another crazy thing is the foam. So you know if you're pulling it out of the box and it's and you can actually fry it pulling it out of the box because you get a big static discharge against that um, that plastic bag and the styrofoam. So so Ray, uh, the fastest thing was yes the we we are now putting bricks in because it's the fastest solution the second fastest solution is, is as chip mentioned the esd on the board it just takes a little longer so the fastest thing we could do is replace all bricks so that's why we did that first yeah but Got it's, it. um, again it's not something if it happens if it does happen to somebody then it's their environment more likely than the kicker and it's yeah and that's where the, the having a grounded brick makes you less susceptible, so that's a step in the right direction. And then ultimately having this ESD protection, um, but but it's not a new problem with Kicker 18. It was something Kicker 17, the Kicker 16. It's it's never been um, nothing has changed except that we're down to just a very few number of, of issues, and they're very clear what they are to us now, so we're able to fix them. So it it seems to me like on the on the noise thing it's it's fairly clear cut and that it's um, you know I think you've you've caught it and from I've talked to folks including one friend of mine that's run into the issue on the noise side of it um, that that you know the key definitely does fix it um, I think on the the ESD side of it I, I suspect there's some folks out there who may be like in carpeted living rooms who are kind of wondering like the next time they jump on their kicker are they going to kill it again or whatnot. Is there anything those folks should be looking at doing, or like can they reach out to you to get a new power supply or something like that to reduce that, or supply or something like that to reduce that, or uh, absolutely not. I mean, just um, it's it's not something that um, that happens frequently enough that I would worry about it. The power supply isn't a foolproof solution. It's just a, a ground power supply is a step in the right direction for DSD. It's one of the steps. So um, yeah, like it, if it happens, call us. We'll make it better. But don't worry that it's going to happen because it's extremely unlikely. Um, you know, I wouldn't say use an electrostatic strap or anything. Um, you know, it's not it's not desperately fragile. It's just susceptible to getting shot. Okay. And does the does the key item affect both the core as well as the main kicker, or only the the kicker eighteen? You no, know, the the core is a tightening issue of the uh, manufacturing. Um, Installation really. There's no key that's required to, to do the change. It's really just tightening the bolts to the correct torque specs, which we have on our website and which we'll send you as well, right? Okay, so that's the case. If someone's getting sounds in the core, they can follow the tightening steps and be off and running yes, sir. pretty quickly. And, and no, okay. nothing required, but it, and there is also um, you know incentive that we have for customers to do that work as well. The same thing as a kicker, so self repair. Okay. And then I think the last problem that I've heard that I know sounds frivolous, but people will ask about it is the throwing down a sprint and having the, the stickers fly off um, the flywheel, um, primarily the core. Uh, is that something you guys have, have addressed or 
like more Elmer's glue or? We've addressed it with better um, adhesive and those are now in pipeline and all they have to do is reach out to us and we're happy to ship those. Okay. Um, so I think finally the last thing that, that people have asked is, you know, is this, it sounds like, I think you've kind of covered this, but maybe to sort of reiterate a little bit. Um, obviously you guys have, have switched manufacturing vendors and whatnot this year and for all the, the trainers. Um, and some people speculated that the issues that you're seeing are manufacturing driven, you know, QA, QC, et cetera. Um, is that the case or is that more of just design failures? I'd love to be able to point to the factory, but it's on, it's on us. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a couple of design changes that we didn't pick up on consequences and they've been fixed. Um, I am ecstatic with the new factory there. Um, you know, I don't want to give our, any competitive secrets away. I ride with the owner in Atlanta. They live here in Atlanta. Um, so yeah, we're, we're super happy with, our, with our, the quality we have in, in all of our products now. Cool. Okay, well, I appreciate the time. I appreciate you guys going through this a little bit. Uh, maybe just really quick, you can show uh, kind of a close up on the um, both the kicker and the, the kicker core as to where the tightening and where the uh, the bolt is, or the key is. Drew has done his very best to stay off the video, but I'm going to make him. Okay, right. <laughs> uh, I have done my very best to stay off the video, so but I should show where the key way is. Um, so should, do you want me to, you know, just assume that people have already taken off their flywheels? Um, so again, if you follow the steps, it, it kind of tells you where, where to go and, and where things really are. So I'm going to assume that they're midway through the steps, okay? That the keyway is, is here, and the key fits in the surface. Sorry. So it all fell out. So the key fits in this surface here. And as you can see, sometimes, yeah, put this on the table. Ray, you're going to have to edit this. <laughs> you actually have to press this in. Because it's, you know, and I'll show the old one, Chip, if you'll get the old one off the table, you can see it just was almost kind of falling out. But this one, you actually have to press in with a pair of pliers, which it says in the instructions as well. Yeah. So, and then the keyway, as you can see. So, yeah, can you, can you slide that on, Drew? So you can see what the key is meant to drive the torque from the belt through to the flywheel. And it's, it's not a question of is it doing it or not. It's a question that it, you know, we, didn't, we didn't design it so that it was... Um, so that it was super tight, the tolerance there, and it and it leads to that noise when it when it's uh, when it works loose. And what is for the average person that wants to do the key steps at, at home themselves? Um, what's the typical time frame to do that? Like if you're take? if you're very mechanical, it's going to take you twenty minutes or less. If you're a little less mechanical, I'm going to double that time and say forty. But either either way, it's it's not an intense. You don't have to be very handy to do it. The tools required are very minimal. A pair of pliers, um, a pair of Allen wrenches, and a 19 millimeter socket are all that's required. And then a Sharpie to mark uh, where your belt tension was. And all this is in the instructions. So it's, it's a very easy repair. And then for the, the core, for the tightening side of it, what does it typically take for that to get that done? Even, even less, even less because you don't have to remove any parts. Um, and so really it's just an untightening, retightening. Okay guys, thank you very much. I, I appreciate the time and, and kind of diving into a bit and hopefully uh, if folks have questions, they can drop them in the comments down below or somewhere else and you guys can catch that. Or more importantly, if you've got actually a, a broken kicker or whatnot, just simply call Wahoo Support. Sounds like that's the best, the best answer to get things, get things cooking and get you back in business pretty quickly here. Thanks guys. Thank you, Ray. Okay, so there you go. That's Wahoo's take on things. Uh, and I'd give you my little quick take on that. Um, from a technical standpoint, what they're saying matches up almost exactly with what people have been happening or had happened. Uh, and that's, I think, like the whole ESD thing definitely explains why people kept having the same thing, like why they kept killing their same unit over and over again. And it's likely someone environmental. Like here for me in the cave, I'm on concrete flooring and I've got, like it's, I have, I've not like static discharged myself on anything here at all ever. Um, versus if I was in a you know typical living room setup with maybe some carpet and whatever else going across on my socks and then I hit that, like 
that I could see how someone could, like my old place in DC, I probably would have killed the unit pretty darn quickly because it's like carpet everywhere and all that kind of stuff. So I could see how people could do the same thing repetitively and be like, this is the worst kicker ever. Um, and so this helps to explain it a little bit. Uh, I'm hoping that with the, the new power bricks that will reduce that, that, that chance of that happening. And it seems to be the case for folks that I've heard back from some of you um, that you know, have gone through like two or three kickers and then getting that new brick seemed to help a little bit. Uh, as far as the whole noise thing, you know, obviously I've seen that like drop off pretty consistent, pretty considerably in the last month or so. Um, of course, if you had a, like mine, my kicker is Chip just mentioned, I broke my kicker yesterday. In fact, I broke it yesterday during a noise video shooting um, with the Hammer 2. And you'll see that next week, I think. Um, so you'll, you'll get to enjoy that little bit of um, irony. So as I'm having this, like trying to finalize the details of this video, I managed to break my own kicker in the process. Uh, but that was months, months later that I finally killed it. Uh, and so in this case, this is, it's a kicker from well before they made those changes. And so therefore, uh, once they get me that little key part thing, I'll be able to go ahead and swap it out and fix it and be good to go. Uh, and that's what I've heard too from some of my friends that have had this happen to uh, this unit primarily is that, you know, once have done that, they were happy and, and good to go. Um, obviously, as I said at the beginning, you hope that no company has these problems, but I'm more interested in how they resolve the problems necessarily uh, than the actual problem itself. Uh, so if we look at the indoor trainer space at large, certainly tax has had more than its fair share of production type QAQC problems. Um, even this year as well, I managed to kill, you know, tax flux S out of the gate, um, though my Neo 2 is, was fine. Uh, and, you know, we've seen others like Kinetics certainly struggling with some of the software elements of their and some of the stuff with the R1 as well, some, some minor things there. So anyways, hopefully you found this interesting from like a technical standpoint and explanation standpoint. Uh, as I mentioned before, I don't really do interview videos and all that kind of stuff too often. Like that's not really my cup of tea. I'm more about just give me the tech. Um, but I think this is important enough that um, folks should, you know, be aware of the problems that were going on and the resolution and, and all that jazz. Anyways, if you found this interesting, whack the like button at the bottom. Or if you're new around here, hit the subscribe button for plenty more sports tech goodness. I got some more trainers as well on the way. Uh, I've got over there just waiting for my very first ride as soon as I get out of this and into, onto the bike, uh, the Flux 2 from Tax. And then I've got my Hammer 2 um, H2 Cyclops review coming out next week as well. Uh, 